escape plan. Leave the rat race in the dust. Fap. I'm getting ready to paint, and this is where the stock wiring harness went. You can see I took it down, and these plastic pieces are what kept it attached to the wall. I'm going to get rid of those, and then when I build my wiring harness, I'm going to tie it in with this one, and you won't even be able to tell there was a separate harness added to it. All this hardware that holds it on, I'm going to get rid of, and I'll replace it with cable brackets instead. Before I paint, I'm just going to take some sandpaper, scuff up the paint that's already there, so I'll give it some tooth to grab onto. We're about to show how to make a wiring harness, so we're going to show how to do splicing and taping. You can see we got the wires all spread out. That's for the fan. This is for lights. Another L for lights. And then more lights. And then the fan. I know the fuse panel is going to be over here, so what I do is start running the wires and I tape them approximately where they'll be and label them. The white duct tape is labeled for fan and then at the other end where they're going to go to the fuse panel they're labeled there as well. Since I'm running parallel I'm going to splice this in so I'll cut that and also label it. Here's the importance of labeling again. L for lights, fan, Look at this mess of wires. It all comes up out of its point of use, runs across the ceiling. We have multiple splices happening at this point to go up into the wall. And then it all runs out. Kind of have three lights up here. So now that the wiring harness is mocked up in place, I'm going to tape it every four to six inches so I can then safely take it down without everything getting mixed up and then I'll tape the whole thing. Here's the wrapping technique. It takes her a little getting used to but once you get in the groove you just keep tilting it and rolling it and go down the entire length. And this is where we're going to do some splicing. Got a buck connector kit. So what I need to do, since I'm running everything parallel, is I need these two wires from the battery to turn into four wires. So let's cut them. Use the appropriate size stripper. I'm working with 14 gauge. Don't strip it back so far that you have exposed wire. Bud connector. I'm using yellow because I gotta put so many wires into it, otherwise, I would use blue. But I also did another video on this for something more detailed. I crimp it and then make sure it's on there tight. You don't want it coming loose. Now here's the two wires. I got them stripped back further than I normally would because these two need to get twisted together and do a very extreme twist with it. Like that. Make sure they really wrap around each other so one doesn't slip loose and twist and smooth it out. 
and then that will fit in that side. I'll get the crimp ready. There we go, holding it. I'm looking down inside of there to make sure none of the wires snag, that it slides in smoothly. So all the way in there, and then we crimp it. Now, pull. Nice and tight. So I'm going to do that. So all the displaces I need to do. Then I'm going to wrap each one individually with tape. Then I'll wrap the entire thing. I'll show you that next. And that's each one taped. That way it won't come loose later on from road vibration. Now I'd recommend if you know how to solder, to do this all in solder. It'll be a lot more low profile, but that's a whole nother thing in itself. This is something real easy that anybody can get into. We're halfway done. That's where it splits off into three different ways. And then this way splits off into two different ways. There's one of my splices right there. That's going to be the bulkiest part of the harness. That's why if you solder, you can take the bulk down a lot. There's the completed wiring harness. Let's walk down here. This is the junction with the splices. Comes out to the fan. Two of the lights. And then this one goes to the back of the van. That's a fan. That's the rear light. There it all is. We got that last little bit of wiring to tidy up. So I've got screw in cable ties. And that's what I'll finish it off with. We have the one that goes up above and it's a fully wrapped wiring harness. This one it will not be. This one will be made in place. So it just needs to be wrapped every four inches to keep it all tidy. And I will put some cord wrap around that to protect it. But let's go underneath and see what it looks like. See them cable ties? Hold it right up against the bottom of the bunk, out of the way. So when he slide your boxes in and out of here, nothing's going to catch. And then it all goes into the sink cabinet from right there. It's important to give the, not make your wraps, to make your bends too tight. You don't want to crimp and uh, metal fatigue the wires. You want to set it up so it's not rubbing everything held in place and not moving. So that is the wiring on us. 